the sound of his voice Seas that are shaken and stirred Can be calmed and broken from my regard And through it all, through it all My eyes are on you And through it all, through it all It is well through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you, and it is well with me. Far be it from me to not believe. Even when my eyes can't see In this mountain that's in front of me We'll be thrown into the midst of the sea And through it all, through it all My eyes are on you And through it all It is well, and it is well. Let go of my soul and trust in Him. The waves and wind still know His name. Let go of my soul and trust in Him. The waves
song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, a name above every other Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, holy, there is no one like you, there is none besides you. Oh,
napíše a on napíše
You're so proud of us. You're so proud of us. You stand in awe, smiling down. You're so proud of us. You're so proud of us. You're so proud of us. Cause you are perfect. Wasn't that incredible worship? I just love being in the presence of God and worshiping together. It is such a powerful experience. You are going to be so blessed this morning. We have a guest speaker, Mike Skews, who we love and cherish so much. He has spoken into our lives over years and years, and we just so value his wisdom and his input. And he's also spoken into our church's life for a number of years too. So prepare your hearts this morning. You are going to hear such a great word. And don't forget, after the service, 11.30, come down to the church grounds. We are having a picnic. So 11.30. 30 today BYO everything rugs food yourselves and um, anything else that you would like to bring we can't wait to see you and spend time together bless your family well good morning Mount Clear Church of Christ uh, those that are watching on YouTube and Facebook to all our friends and family um, family life church etc it is so good uh, to be with you again on a Sunday morning uh, this week for a little bit different uh, rather than have my stunning, beautiful, who's watching at home wife, Melanie, sitting beside me. I've got someone just as brilliant, maybe not as stunning, but uh, we've got Mike Skews uh, with us again. <laughs> Hello, Mike. How are you? <laughs> I was good, <laughs> but now I accept, I accept the compliment. It's okay. <laughs> I'm glad. Now, for those that don't know Mike, um, Mike is, uh, I guess you would call him a professional counsellor. He's probably got some uh, professional name that he'll tell you all about. But uh, as far as our church is concerned, and for many of us here at Mount Clear, um, we have been uh, and or go or need to go and sit with Mike often just to sometimes have our compass um, put in order so that we can live life and deal with life and learn how to deal with life with the tools that he's obviously garnered um, over his history, I guess, um, of doing, dealing with people, etc. And we just thought it would be wonderful to speak into the life of our church again. And uh, I have no idea which way he's going to go, but I'm going to throw it over to you and just let you take it. <laughs> well, I thought what a better way to start than with the Word of God. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, as a, as a counsellor and professional counsellor, I don't always use the Word of God openly in a session. I use it through my mouth and my heart, and obviously prayer is a big part of it too, but I don't always pray in the session, Yeah. but I'll pray all the time in my spirit and before sessions. But I, I want to speak today 
to all the people listening from a passage in Philippians. And it's a really, to me, it's a really powerful passage. And it says this, Philippians 2, 12. Therefore, dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence. Paul had been visiting the Philippians and he'd gone, visited, spent some time ministering to them, then he'd gone away. And on going away, he'd written a letter back to them and he's saying, now, hey, I know when I was there, you were doing okay, but now that I'm not there, I want you to do even better. That's what he's really getting at. Yeah. And he says, now, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Amen. Right? And then he goes on and says, do everything without complaining or arguing. Grumbling. Come on. Come Come on. on. Yep. So that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you will shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life. And what I want to talk about is those three things. Working out, shining out, holding out. Yep. Right? It's all about the word. Amen. The word in our life. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Well, share. Okay. (laughs) Okay. What about if we pray? We know where we're going. Let's pray that we get there in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you that we have... Uh, the wonderful privilege of having Mike with us today. We do thank you again, as we always do, that we still have the ability and the freedom to be able to get together, Lord, and fellowship with one another, even through digital platforms. And so we just ask, Holy Spirit, that you would certainly have your way, that you would minister to each and every one of us, that you would shape and cut and prune and mould us into the image of your Son with ever-increasing glory with the words that are spoken. And we come away more and more like Jesus after today. And we pray this, obviously, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Andrew. Hey, um, the first stop area was about working out your salvation. Paul's talking about you've got something really special here, so how about you work it out? Now, like Andrew here, you can tell he works out real good, okay? <laughs> And you don't get that beefy arms without having that big weight to carry around. That's right. <laughs> so, one of the first things we need to realise, I mean, the, the first thing is salvation, as Paul is talking about here, is from God and from God alone. Yeah, amen. We, we don't work for it. Paul's not saying you've got to work for it because we can't, right? We can't earn it. Like, you can't do a whole lot of good stuff and then God say, oh, yeah, tell you what, I think I'll give you an OBE of salvation. (laughs) Yeah, No, Uh, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, preach it. The thing is, we need to understand it's a free gift. Yeah. It's already been wrapped. It's already been given. All we've got to do is take it. Now, here's the thing. And I want to read some more scriptures, right? This one's from Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, and it says, For it is by grace... The word grace means gift. It is by gift that you have been saved through faith. And is not from yourself, so yeah, you can get it yeah. yourself. It is of God. It is a gift. Not by work, so you can't earn it, so that you can't boast. So we need to realise this salvation that Paul's talking about is only from God through the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ yeah, amen. on the cross. Amen. Right? He wasn't tortured. He wasn't murdered. He actually willingly went yeah. because way back before the beginning of the world when the Holy Spirit and God and Jesus sat down together, when they let us make man yeah, yeah. in our image, they sat down and decided that because they knew what was going to happen when they made people, that they would make wrong choices, particularly wrong choices about God. And of course, once we start making wrong choices about God, we also make wrong choices about our peers, our friends, our partners. So back then, the only way to change that direction was to have someone change it for us. Give us the opportunity to change it. So they went through hundreds of years, potentially thousands of years, we're not sure how long, but a long, long time, 
before Jesus appeared on the earth. And of course, according to our calendar today, which is 2020, 2020 as we call it, that's 2020 years since the birth, potentially since the birth of Jesus, right? Came Correct. into this world. And then about 33 years after that was when he finally was led down the road to Golgotha and laid himself willingly, not forced, willingly, he knew it was going to happen. And he gave his life so that we, people of the earth, would never have to be punished by God. Amen for that. Right? And just to back that up, this is what it says. So some people don't believe that when Jesus died on the cross, that he died for all people. Yep. You know, I had someone say, no, he didn't. He only died for the Christians. Well, hang on, we'll come <laughs> back to that. Okay. For God so loved the world. And when you read it in the text in the Greek, it means the whole world. And that's not the physical place. That's the people of it. Yeah, come right? on. That he gave his one and only son, that whoever would believe in him should not perish, but have eternal lasting life. For, and then verse 17 says this, and I love this because it really places the emphasis on what God is not doing. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the Come world, on. but he sent his son to save the world from him. Right? That's the reason that Jesus came. He didn't come to get condemned. So all these people that talk about God condemning us, right? Yeah. and I could go to Romans and read about we're no longer condemned in Christ. Right. It, it is really funny how people see God that way sometimes, you know, just because he has a particular way that he would like us to live our lives. Um, people feel as though if we don't live that way, then God's going to condemn you. But it's almost like saying um, the police give us a law not to speed. And then when I choose to speed and I get caught and I get a I get a fine, they're condemning me. Mm. But they just knew what was better for me, that it was safer if I stayed to 50 k's in that zone or better at 40 because of the children they knew that so they put something in place that was to help and to That's benefit correct exactly right yeah. exactly right it's not condemning at all and the last bit i want to say on the salvation thing is as i said it's not just for christians no well we were christians before, before. <laughs> exactly exactly you see before you were a christian what were you yeah i was a non-believer yeah exactly you weren't a christian and this is what it says in first john 2 Verse 1, he, Jesus, is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Yeah, come on. Right? So we need to understand, anyone who's listening, who's not a believer, not a Christian, Jesus for you, right? Come when on. he came into this world, he didn't yeah. just come for good people, right? He came so for all people. Good people. He came for all people. Yeah, amen. And that includes me and Andrew, okay? Yeah, totally. And what we need to understand is what Paul's saying here is you've got to understand the, the gift you've got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work it out in your life. Yeah. God's not there condemning you. So exercise this practice of not being condemned in your life. Yeah. I don't know about you, but when, when I first started working, I had a boss, uh, did an apprenticeship in carpentry. Well, when I settled down and I started working at MB Johns on machines and hated that. And then I went and did a bit of a plumbing thing for two days, digging holes out in the mud. You didn't like that? Ah, I didn't like that. I hated coming home with mud on my boots. It was terrible. So you realised dealing with people's hearts, minds and souls was easier? Yeah, well, I didn't quite get it. <laughs> I, I actually became a carpenter, a joint a carpenter. And, I was, and the boss I had, he lived out here at Mount Helen, and a lovely, lovely guy, but he was a, a hard worker, and, and he was really strict. On, I felt he was strict on me, but he was kind too. And, and what he used to say to me was, Mike, if you want to get anywhere in this business, you've got to practice doing this stuff. And we used to nail floors down with a hammer, then not a nail gun. Yeah, yeah. And for every time you left an imprint of the hammerhead on the, it was 10 cents out of your pay, right? Well, I can tell you the first floor I did, I didn't get too much pay. <laughs> so I learned from that. So I used to go home, and, and my dad set me up with a bit of pine wood and a three inch nail, a few three inch nails, bang them into these nails and practice putting them in yeah, yeah. without putting any dents. Come on. Yeah. Practicing it, right? 
I wonder how we go about practising not being condemned. Because, yeah. you know, one of the things that happened back in the Garden right. of Eden was the old shame. Thing. Yeah, what a great right. thought. Come on. Yeah. We, we need to realise God, God doesn't want us to carry that. No. Right? Now, just let me clarify. When Jesus came and died on the cross, he did not come to fix your self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Right? The first thing he came to do was make sure that you didn't have to worry about the punishment of sin. Yeah. That's an eternal separation from God. That's the first thing we've got. Now, as a consequence of you getting your life right with God, he also wants to help you with that other stuff. Yeah. The shame, the self-worth, the self-esteem. But that's not the primary person in which you come. I just want to clarify that. This is what Jesus said about those people who put things into practice. He said, one day he was preaching at a big house, and there's so many people in the house and outside the house, which obviously wasn't COVID times, right? And so everybody's outside, everybody's inside, and someone rushes through the, pushes through the crowd, one of his disciples, and whispers to him, hey, Jesus, your father, your mother, your brothers and your sisters, they're all outside. And Jesus turned to the crowd and he said, my family, my family are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. Yeah. Right? They're tough words, those. Absolutely. And then a little bit later, he said it in Luke 6, that was in Luke 8, in Luke 6, he says this, but the one who hears my words and doesn't put it into practice is like a man who builds a house yeah. on the ground without a foundation. Now, being a builder, I know what that means. It's going to fall down pretty quick, right? And so the moment the torrent struck and the rain fell, the house collapsed and it crunched. Yeah. Down, right? So what Jesus is saying, if you don't practice this stuff, it's going to collapse. Whatever you're building, it's going to collapse. And I can say as a builder, that's exactly what happens. Yeah. Right? There's houses even around here in Ballarat that are built. In fact, one of the houses we renovated ourselves was built in 1872. And the two front rooms of the house were built on the ground, no yeah. foundation. Yeah. Just like on the ground. Yeah, you know? I believe it. And we were walking through the lounge one day, this is before we renovated, and... You fell through? Our foot went through the floor. <laughs> it didn't have to go far because it was sitting on the ground. But, you know, that's what happens, yeah. right? And it was on a bit of a hill in Dufton Street, so therefore when it rained, all the water used to come down. And Wow. Yeah. But Paul's saying, work it out. And then he goes to... How do we work it out? Because well, he goes to... Without complaining, yeah. or groaning, or grumbling, or what was the other one? Arguing. Oh my goodness, arguing. You know, I see that in my counselling room all the time. In fact, I've just come from sessions with supervisees, which are counsellors who are counselling other people, and they come to me to say, look, are we doing the right thing with these people? What can I look at? And that sort of thing. And one of the constant things is hearing people argue. It's not a good look, it's not a good sound. No. Right? And one of the things that Paul says, whatever we do, whether we eat or drink, word or deed, we should do it for the glory of God. Yeah, sure. Right? And what's the glory of God? Well, as it says back here in, in Philippians, it says we need to do this to fulfill God's purpose. So what was God's purpose? That we shine. Right? So what does it mean to shine? We'll look at that in a moment, okay? And first of all, let's look at this. Whether we eat or drink, whatever we do, we do to God's glory. Right? Now, it doesn't say to God's standard. No, it says God's glory. It says yeah. God's glory. In fact, back there in Philippians, what we read before, it says, God's purpose is that we become pure and blameless children of God. Not perfect. The difference between the two, Andrew. Yeah. Well, because we're children of God, we've been, as a church, we've been talking about, about the last three or four weeks now, being a child of God, that Jesus tells us to be childlike, Paul tells us to put off childish things. And I, I guess the paradox of our Christianity is even though we move towards maturity, we actually never stop being his child. And as a child, um, if I'm looking to you as a child of God, I know that you need care, comfort, support. Yep. There are things that you need, whether you uh, accept them or not. Putting off the childish things is being able to accept those things. But when he says, don't argue, don't do those things, for me, it's, it's a matter of being able to actually see each other as children of God. And if I can actually do that and treat you as a child of God, then I am 
my prayer would be that I would be bringing glory to God, that there wouldn't be a comparison there, that, you know, I, I, I could actually work things out because I'm loving out, you know. I, mm. I, I just love the complexity of it. It's actually quite, yeah, quite yeah, lovely. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So the whole thing about being blameless is about what, what's your intention when you say that yeah. word? Right? Yeah, totally. Go back inside and you've worked out, you know, and some of the working out looks back at the family of origin stuff. You know, my dad was a drunk, an alcoholic, and I had to work out what that meant for me. And by the time I was 30, I had some idea. Yeah. It meant if you come from a family of an alcoholic, usually what it means is you have suppressed emotions because you have to not upset the alcoholic, right? Not that my dad was violent, and I just want you to know that he wasn't, but an alcoholic takes over with his rants and his talking and he's loud and he's and there's no room for anyone else yeah. right and gets suppressed so two things can happen once you come out from under that suppression you can become really boisterous and loud just like the parent or you can stay suppressed so that when you hear someone who's got a strong opinion you shrink away and you don't voice yourself, yeah. right? And you feel like you're being victimised when in actual fact you're not, yeah. right? And then you have trouble setting boundaries for yourself so you're not able to be assertive because for you being assertive means you're being aggressive. Yeah. Well, yeah. it feels like that, right? And so what God's asking us to do is go inside and reflect on what's the purpose of saying this? That I say to people in relationship counselling, three, three R's, right? Take responsibility for your own feelings, yep. attitudes, and behaviours. Yep. Don't blame other. You made me think that. You made me feel. You made me do. No, no, no. Hang on. They're your feelings. They're your attitudes, thought processes. They're your behaviours. You need to take responsibility for. Right. Yep. Fair. Right. When I stand before God, God's going to ask me about why I did these things. And I can't say, "Well, <laughs> I was with Andrew." Oh, hang on, hang on, Michael. <laughs> And when God I'm, says, I know what Andrew's like. I tell yeah, him. he'll say, when I'm finished with you, if there's enough time left in eternity, then I'll find out what Andrew was doing, okay? But, no, seriously, God wants us to take responsibility for our own feelings, attitudes and behaviours. But then also he wants to do is to be respectful towards other people. Yeah. That they have difference of feelings. They have difference of opinions. <laughs> they have difference of ways of doing things. Yeah. They may not be the same as me or Andrew. But you know what? They're human beings who later have their choice. Now, the choices may be wrong. That doesn't mean I have to agree with it. That's right. It doesn't Come have on. to like it. Yeah. Right? And if it's not, and I want to say this because this is a bit of humanism, right, if you take it the wrong way. If it's not hurting anyone else and they won't listen to me because I'm worried about it hurting them, then I need to respect that God's given them that freedom to make that choice. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. And not judge them. Yeah. But love them. That's what God says. We actually what? touched on some of that um, in last week's uh, sermon. In and around that, there's a passage of scripture that I just can't think of exactly, but it says, "Welcome, uh, welcome the children of God, as because as you welcome the child, you welcome me, and as you welcome me, you welcome the one who sent me." That's right. And so we broke down. Well, what does it mean to welcome someone? Yeah. To embrace them, to bring them into your world, mm. uh, and then we got onto a whole place of what you were just saying. You know, they may have a different opinion. They might think completely differently. There might be some tension, um, you know, because of some other incident somewhere in life. But I guess uh, the measure of any good relationship is, is the amount of tension it can carry while you're still able to love each other. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. When stuff's going on all around you, and it may not be between you, it might be going all around you. And if you're not coping with it and your partner's not coping with it, it's how you stay connected. Yeah. That is the strength of that relationship. Yeah, absolutely. Right? It's, yeah. Not, it's not what you're not doing about the conflict. You may not be able to do anything about the conflict and tension that's, that's right. going on around yeah. you, but you can stick together. Yeah, absolutely. Right? That's really and good. And so one of the things that God says, oh, I'm sorry, I'm saying about me with people in the counselling room is be responsible for your own feelings, attitudes, behaviours. Be respectful towards others. And then be acting in righteousness, relate in righteousness. In other words, the right reason to do something for somebody. Yep. Not to cast them aside, not to push them down, not to judge them, you know, but to lift them up. Yeah, come on. Ephesians 4.29 says, Don't let any unwholesome word come out of your mouth, but only that which is good for the building up of others, so that those who listen will benefit. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. You can't make them listen. 
You know, I've never seen anybody laying on the ground with a knee on their neck trying to pour something into someone's <laughs> ear because they won't listen. But you yeah. can't make people listen. But no, you, you can can't. put it in such a way that if they hear it, they can take it in when they're receptive. Absolutely. Right? And that's all God wants for us. Now, what God does, what he wants us to do is work out this salvation, is that we work it out in such a way. Now, this is really important because in Romans 8.3, it says, The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our own sinful nature. Yeah. That's why Jesus needed to save us. Because if that was still there, yeah. we couldn't love the way God loves. Yeah, correct. Right? And so then it goes on and says, So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies that we have. And that body, God declared to be an end to sin's control over us by giving his son for a sacrifice for our sin. That's why it's so important to understand salvation can only come through Jesus. Yeah, come on. Right? Really important. And the second part of what we're saying about today is shining out. That shining out, Matthew 5, 15 and 16, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works come and glorify on. your Father in heaven. Yeah. In the same way, he says, if you've got a light, you don't go and put it under the bottom of the table here <laughs> you put it up yeah. so it's going to shine in our faces like these lights here that <laughs> our cameraman's got up now i know he's out there somewhere beyond the back of the lights but yeah sorry dave it's okay but then also god says in second corinthians 4 6 for god said let there be light in the darkness yeah and he's made this light shine in our hearts so we could know god's glory and that is seen in the face of Jesus. Yeah. So in other words, what he's saying is, if we live these li lives the way God wants, without complaining and grumbling and groaning, complaining and grumbling and groaning and arguing, and we become blameless, Come that on. is our intention is to take responsibility, be respectful, yeah. and be relational righteously, then we will shine yeah. with that light. And people will see that. And listen to what it says in Titus. It says, employers must obey their masters or their employees. And do their best to please them. They mustn't talk back or steal from them, but they must show themselves to be entirely trustworthy and good. Then they'll make the teaching about God and our Saviour attractive in every way. Hey, do you hear what that's saying? It's saying that if people won't listen to the gospel, maybe we need to look at how we're behaving. Yeah. Well, one of the biggest criticisms, and it's not the only one, against the Christian church is they're hypocrites. Now, we know that. Right? We don't have to be told that, right? Because we're not perfect, we're blameless. And that's what people don't understand. Yeah. Right? Yeah, come on. They don't know what the intention of our heart is when we do things, say things. And what God also wants us to know is that if we live this way, people look at us and go, how come you? You've just gone through COVID. You've had to work from home all those extra hours. You haven't been bashing your wife and key in Ballarat, unfortunately, here violence in Ballarat since April has gone up by 67%. That's, that's phenomenal. Right? It's crazy, right? And that's just because people have been locked away, not been able to get out and get their normal interactions, but that's no excuse, yeah. right? And I'm not saying that's Christian people, or I'm not saying it's any particular group of just people in at general. all. Just in general, yeah. right? But that's really sad because that means there are kids and women and in some cases men who are being belted up and that's not, not healthy, right? So we need to know that if we're going to live God's way, if we understand this salvation and we live the way God wants, it's going to make a difference. Yes, it will. Right? Amen. And then that will prove our holding out. You know, when I was at school, we used to do what we call the parlour for relay. Don't know it. Well, circular relay. Okay. You know? We had four people in a team and the first person would run 100 yards. Okay, 100 yeah, metres, yeah, yeah. and they had a bat. A bit like a 4x4. Four four. Yeah, 4x4 four four relay. That's, yeah. that's another way of calling it. Yeah, Andrew, you're a 4x1 or yeah. something like that. <laughs> so you had to hold on to that bat, and then very often what would happen is you, you weren't holding on to the bat and firmly enough, the person who went to get it out of your hand, you'd let it go before they got it, and yeah. drop on the ground, and of course the whole team was disqualified. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really important to understand that, right? It's important to understand that if we're not hanging on to it, we can't hold it out. Yeah. yeah. And hanging on to it means we're putting it into practice. Here, guys, that's what it's talking about. Now, let me read the passage again from Philippians. Therefore, dear friends, 
as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Do everything, word or deed, yeah. eat or drink, everything without grumbling or arguing, Come complaining, yeah. so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God, then, and, and sorry, without faulting a warped and crooked generation, don't yeah. even get me started on that, right? And then you'll become able to shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold out that word of life, right? Children can change their behaviour from what is seen by the parent, yeah. right, to what is not seen. Kids do it all the time, but you know what? Adults do it too, right? That's how we learn. Yeah, and the Jesus. writer is saying here, let's be consistent. Whether we're being seen or not, yeah. we should be the same. Whether it's in the home or out yeah. of the home, whether it's in the church or out of the church, whether it's in our Christian <laughs> friends or not, doesn't matter. Yeah. Whoever, let's be consistent. First Peter 2.15 says, It is God's will that your honourable lives yeah. should silence ignorant people Come on. who make foolish accusations against the church. Yeah. You hear what that's saying? Let's get it right. Yeah. And I guess that's why it says in John... John 13, by this men will know that you're my, my disciples. disciples. Because you love one another yeah, yeah, as yeah. I have loved have you. Loved you. Yeah, See, totally. God's intent was way back then. Yeah, come on. Never lost it. Kept it up consistently. Yeah. Okay? So, folks, let's work it out. Let's shine out as we hold out. Yeah, come on. Okay? The holding out is the, the toughest part. Okay. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Mike, thanks. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray that as a people we're able to do exactly that, work it out so that it will shine out and then we can actually hold it out, not just for the brothers and sisters that we can see, but even those that are on the outskirts watching us. So, Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this word, Lord, a, a, a true word in good season. Lord, for what we're going through. And Father, I pray that it would be real for each and every one of us. That as we step away from our lounge rooms, God, our, our tablets, our TVs, our cars, wherever we're watching and listening, Lord, that we'd be able to do this very thing, thing that we would be able to work out so that we can shine out, Lord, for your glory and hold out that others might get to know Jesus. So we do give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Mike, thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Brilliant word, mate. We're totally out of time. See that. God bless you all. Ah, <laughs> uh, cool one.